بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين الحمد لله we have توفيق to continue our study of the book مفاتيح الحياة the keys of life by Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli uh, today I am in Glasgow and uh, Alhamdulillah from here we are able to have our session. We start uh, chapter 8 which is about uh, beautifying and uh, keeping ourselves tidy and present ourselves in a nice way. So what we find in our hadith is that Islam has high regard for beauty and for acting and saying and presenting yourself in a beautiful way. So right now our focus is on presenting yourself, like the way you dress, the way you uh, dress your hair, you comb your hair, uh, the way you keep your beards, everything should be in the way that you look nice, you look well, people respect you more. Not that God forbids you present yourself in the way that people uh, show you, you know, less respect. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Elbas watajamal fa in Allah Jamilun Yuhabul Jamal Waliyakun Min Halal. Put on your clothes watajamal and try to be beautiful. Beautify yourself. Seek beauty. Because God is beautiful and loves beauty. وَلْيَكُنْ مِنْ حَلَالٍ Of course, this should be from halal, something which is pleasant, something which is permissible, something which is not involving doing haram, either by, for example, using haram materials, haram methods, haram money to buy, and things like that. So, we have... Lots of things about this. I only read some of the hadith that Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli has mentioned. Uh, for example, we have this hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ash-sha'ru al-hasan min kiswatillahi ta'ala fa'akramu. Beautiful hair is one of the covers of God means one of the ways that Allah covers you and you know gives you uh, good uh, cover of you know a naked and you know uh, bold body you know if you don't have hair it's like having no dress no clothes so it doesn't look that beautiful فَأَكْرَمُ so you should also treat your hair with respect. Clean it, wash it, uh, comb it, and things like this. We find that one of the uh, characteristics of a mu'min is tajammulun fi faqah. al mu'minu lahu A believer has several characteristics. One is tajammulun fi faqah. They try to seek beauty in poverty. As we have been saying again and again, you don't need to spend too much money on your clothes, on your shoes, on your hair. You need to make sure that you keep them clean and tidy and organized. If needed, iron them. So you, even if you are a poor person, still you can do lots of things to present yourself in a good way. Uh, 
it is also said that when your hair becomes white because of aging don't remove your hair which has become white this is actually your part of your beauty it shows light it shows maturity hadith says ash-shaybu nurun fala tantifu white hair is light don't remove it not not for sham means to remove to take out piece of hair rasulullah used to comb his hair uh, regularly and also it is said that rasulullah used to look at water or mirror and uh, comb his hair uh, Rasulullah used to um, look after his appearance when he was with the family or when he was meeting his companions and he said that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna Allah yuhibbu min abdihi idha kharaja ila ikhwatihi an yatahayya lahum wa yatajammal Truly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that his servant, when he goes out to meet his brothers, to prepare himself for them and to beautify himself. If I have a visitor, if I have guests, if I'm going to meet my brothers and sisters, then I should not, you know, be careless and go with any clothes, any, you know, way of my hair and so on and so forth. This is not good for my respect. This also means that you don't have any respect and regard for that person because when you meet an important personality, you don't go like that. Uh, it is said that Rasulullah used to advise women that they should, uh, uh, you know, also be concerned about their beautification. For example, to keep uh, uh, some of their nails so that uh, it looks more beautiful for them. Of course, if there's a stranger going to meet them and see them, that's another story. But for your for mahram at home, so hadith said, "Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam linnisa'ih." اتركنا من اظافيركن فانه ازين لكم leave some of your nails because this is more beautifying you we have also uh, emphasis on using perfume as you remember, we had also some discussion about this. For example, we have uh, this hadith that um, it says about perfume that arba'un min akhlaq al anbiya. There are four things which are uh, morals and traits of character of the prophets. One is at tayyub to use perfume with fragrance. Or hadith says, ma anfaqta fatib falaysa bis saraf. What you spend for buying perfume is not israf, is not considered as excessive expenditure. It doesn't mean that you know, you spent, you know, lots of money, for example, you know, hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars and then you say there's no israf no it means that perfume is necessary perfume is not something luxury something that you you know say no i want to have simple life i don't want perfume is one of the needs genuine and reasonable needs and if you spend reasonably on perfume it's not israf if you spend too much on perfume of course that would be not uh, acceptable Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa especially emphasized on 
using perfume on Fridays. So he said, "Le yatatayyab ahadukum yawm al Jumu'ah, walau min qarura timraati." Each of you should try to put on perfume on the day of Jumu'ah Friday, even if it is to take from the perfume bottle of your wife. Of course, if it doesn't uh, only suit women, because then you don't, you know, look nice, you know, in the society. But if it's a general perfume and, you know, you have to borrow from your wife and she's happy with that, or you, it's something that, you know, is uh, belonging to you, anyway, you can use it till uh, you find another, for example, perfume for yourself so even if it's a matter of saying you know may I borrow your perfume for example you would do that hadith also says if people give you gift accept it's not good that you reject people who want to give you gift unless there's suspicion for example that they want to bribe you they want to you know, cause damage for you. That's another issue. But in a general way, in a general way, you know, generally speaking, a mu'min uh, is good to give gifts to his brothers and sisters, uh, of brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters, or if they offer to accept. It's not good to reject when someone honestly, sincerely offers a gift. So it says, accept gift if it is given to you and then Rasulullah says uh, the best gift is perfume it's very uh, light to carry it's not very heavy you know perfume normally is you know one gram two gram one mesqal you know uh, it, you know it's not that you know you have kilos of kilograms of perfume <laughs> so it's cheap uh, I mean uh, not cheap uh, you know light and also it is the best of them in smell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very concerned about smelling nice and used to uh, uh, use you know perfume for example mesk amber kanai sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yatatayyab rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, putting on perfume sorry bidhukur at-tayyib with the best of perfumes which was mesk and amber so you know in Farsi we say mushk in Arabic we say mesk khetamuhu miskun as we have in the Quran well amber which I think uh, it's something that they take from some uh, fish uh, so these are things that are important to use to um, smell you know, nice and you can imagine in the time of the Prophet, these things were normally, I think, imported from far places. Uh, you know, there was no uh, amber produced in Mecca, for example, so they had to import. So therefore, the price must have been reasonably uh, not so low, but still it is good to use them. Imam Raza alayhi salam says, La yan bakil rajul an yata atib fi kulli yom. It is not expected a man would not use uh, perfume every day. So it means that you should use it every day. Fa in lam yaqdir fa yomun wa yomun la. Or fa yomula. If he is not able, so one day he uses, one day he doesn't use it. Yes, fayomun wayomun la means every other day he can use it. So if he cannot do it every day, he use it every other day. Fa'ilam yagdir fa fi kulli jumu'ah. 
if you cannot do it every other day, at least every Friday, so once a week at least. But wala ya But he would not stop it. He would not leave it all together. If you remember, we had this hadith that there are three things that make body, you know, happy and you know keep it in a good form and shape. And uh, one of them is using uh, perfume and to smell nice. And finally, the last heading in this chapter is about zinat va arastegi, adornment, beautification, and being tidy. Imam Baghir alayhi salam says, La yan baghi lil marate an tu'attila nafsaha min al huli, walau an tu'allaka fi unukaha qilada. It is not good that a woman altogether stops using, you know, something to beautify herself, even if it is to have a necklace. Of course, this is when she is not seen by a stranger because tazayyun for uh, ajnabi is not allowed. Anything that is a matter of beautification is for mahra. But for mahram, it's good to have tazayyun, especially for husbands. Even in front of your brother, uh, father, uncle, who is mahram, you should look nice. Not in a bad way, but in a nice way, you should look nice. But for your husband, it's very important that you look nice. Also, men are advised to beautify themselves for their uh, wife. And it is very important. So we have uh, in our hadith that men must observe, you know, this beautification for their wife. Putting on a ring from iron or a ring which has animal uh, inscripts on them is not recommended. Putting on aqiq ring is recommended, and hadith says, "Tahattamu bil aqiq, fa inna hu la yusibu ahadukum ahadakum ghammun ma da mazalika alay." Put on aqiq ring, and then, as long as you have it, uh, grief does not come to you. It does not happen to you. So, alhamdulillah, we finished chapter eight. And inshallah, in the next session, we talk about chapter 9, which is about housing and uh, furniture in the home. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds and du'as in the holy months of Ramadan to enable us to benefit from the remaining days and, month, and, days and nights of the month of Ramadan to forgive all our sins and shortcomings to give shifa to all people who are ill, to send his rahmah and maghfirah to all mu'min and mu'minat who have passed away, especially those who are right upon us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our parents who are alive with dignified and healthy and happy life. And if they have passed away, to forgive their sins and to reward them a lot in abundance for everything good that they have done for us. May Allah inshallah grant your hajat wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.